Hello, my fellow soul gardeners. Welcome to Astro 103, episode 13, and we're discussing planets in transit. And today we're going to take a little bit of leap off of classic astrology and move into Watechi astrology, which means we're now starting to go into what I theorize is true, but other astrologers have yet to agree with me. But trust me, I'm a Taurus. They will. We're going to talk about Chiron. Now, Chiron is technically a comet asteroid. Scientists can't decide which it is. It's a big enough rock in space that astrologers have agreed since the late 70s it was, used, it was valuable enough to start paying attention to. And one thing astrologers have all come to agree on is this comet asteroid does focus our healing modality. Okay, So Chiron gets the attributes of our astrology, healing ability, Reiki energy, tarot, numerology, basically all of the tangible kind of abilities to bring in God consciousness. That's what, that's what Chiron does. You channel God consciousness into the moment. And what does that sound like to you? A Virgo. I agree. And that's my personal theory. I argue by the end of my lifetime, we're going to attribute Chiron as the ruling planet of Virgo. I talked about this already, but now when you start to see it in transit, you might see that as well. So I argue it is Virgo's home planet. Now, for starters, the first thing you want to look at is if you're a Virgo, okay, that's where your home planet is. So for you Virgos out there, where's Chiron? Well, at tape time, Chiron is in Aquarius. Chiron has a 50.7 year transit around the sun. That narrows down to about four years per sign on average. It varies because the orbit is elliptical and the orbit is kind of funky. It's very Virgo eccentric. It does not go around the sun like all the other planets. It comes in and out and crosses a couple of planets right in the path of them. Theoretically, it could collide with one almost, but it doesn't. Very Virgo in my sense. And also, this is to me an orbit necessary to be the healer. If you're going to heal the whole solar system and be responsible for making sure the solar system is in check, well, then you've got to have an orbit that no one else has, right? Which to me is very Virgo. They always have this unique, concrete perspective on things that's accurate, it's acute, and at the same time, it's funky. Who would have thought of that but a Virgo? Okay, so I like Chiron a lot, and overall, it's responsible for the healing modality. So, wherever it is in your natal chart, this is that two-part story. Remember, Chiron and Saturn have a similar kind of story in the sense of, in the early stages, chapter one and chapter two, it's always about the uh, client is basically experiencing the learning part of it. And then when it goes into chapter three, the client tends to be a teacher part of it. So in Saturn, it's learning, then teacher. In Chiron, it's patient then healer okay so we start off as a patient first and then we become a healer in that modality so let me explain what that means well the most obvious is if chiron is in your sixth house if chiron's in your sixth house the house of reality which is the home of chiron its home space of virgo well in the first two chapters you might be a patient you might be discovering dis-ease in your soul you might be facing cancer you might be facing weight or any kind of issues under the sun when it comes to having to get a nice relationship with your body by chapter three, okay, then you're going to find that you're not just a patient. Now you're beginning to share your information. You're beginning to become a teacher. So someone might start learning yoga in chapter one and teaching yoga by chapter three. It's just one of those interesting aspects of planets that Chiron and Saturn kind of share. Also, Chiron is about getting real. So wherever Chiron is, it tends to be the most real spot of our life. A reality really kind of slaps us in the face. So again, if Chiron's in the sixth house, what's most real is your body and your moment. And for that four or plus year transit, it's very much about your relationship to your body. Chiron in the seventh, your whole life seems to revolve around your relationships, your partnerships. Chiron in the eighth, trust and intimacy, as well as healing. So if you've been wounded, that would be a big thing. And then of course, by the end, you're gonna be making some fabulous love, hopefully, thanks to Chiron. And what's interesting as well with Chiron is frankly the fact that it only goes around the chart every 50 plus years. So it's not going to hit every house twice. In fact, just like Pluto, if Chiron's in a spot in your chart, it's damn important. And it's kind of karmic as well. Karmic meaning this might be the first time Chiron has hit your chart as a soul in a multi-lifetime story in a long time. So it tends to be karmic issues. It goes beyond just this lifetime. You tend to learn that your soul has past life issues or healing from a past life. So there's a karmic element to Chiron as well. Plus, it's interesting to note just in general with Chiron in Aquarius and Chiron in Capricorn and now Chiron moving into Pisces, 
that we are for the first time in modern age really beginning to draw down some of these powerful tools. It was really the 70s when we discovered Chiron that we discovered or rediscovered these ancient crafts of healing. Reiki got popular again as soon as Chiron was discovered. Astrology, Linda Goodman, everything kind of hit the scene right when we became aware of this planet asteroid. And that's what astrology believes. As human awareness realizes a planet, human awareness realizes what that planet rules. So we've not been fully aware, fully meaning the masses or a bell curve of the population, until the planet is discovered. So it's only been since the 70s that we've really begun to actualize these healing modalities. And then it started turning into business with Capricorn, then Aquarius. And right now, those of us in light work know it seems to be getting more and more common. Common meaning Chiron's in Aquarius. So now humanity is once again starting to realize, especially in Chapter 3, humanity is like, oh yeah, and that's Soul Garden, etc. When Chiron moves into Pisces, we're really going to see uh, us downloading. In fact, Chiron in Pisces is technically in its opposite sign. It is the Virgo consciousness. So when it's in Pisces, it's almost like Chiron has returned to Pisces to get a new upgrade on the greatest and newest healing modalities. It's back close to God, farthest away from on Earth, highest to its, nat its unnatural point, which is near God consciousness. But like a Virgo, what Chiron does is download and bring in. So I think that when Chiron moves into Pisces, the planet is going to expand much greater. We're going to take astrology and all these other things to the next level. And probably that's when it'll start to become common that Chiron rules Virgo. Who knows? So look to see where Chiron is in your chart right now in Aquarius. Look to see where life is most real. And look for conjunctions or aspects to it. So if Chiron is opposing your sun, okay, then literally you are healing in the opposite modality that you live in. So for instance, if your son is in the fourth house, which means you're all about home, family, and foundation, and Chiron is opposing your son, and you'd have to have, be a Leo to have uh, Chiron opposing you right now, obviously, but if Chiron was opposing your son in the tenth house, then you are healing your career, you're healing your reputation, but you're living this life, of course, of your home, family, and foundation. Also look for a conjunction. If you're an Aquarius or a Pisces, Chiron will be conjuncting your sun at some point, and that might be the point when you first got into these tarot and astrology and whatnot. Chiron quite often introduces this whole other concept in itself of healing modalities into the moment. All right, well, check out Chiron, a funky comet asteroid. And when we come back in the next episode, I'm going to bring up a planet you probably never thought of looking for. Until next time, live, love, be.